Welcome back to Bailey with Guernsey Shipwrecks. Today we're going out with Matt and Paul. See if we get some scallops. Yeah. Look at this, this looks weird. No boats in any of these moorings. I don't think I've ever seen it like this before. They have had to leave all these moorings and then go into the marinas. So I like the fishing boats are in the marina over there. It's because they're doing uh, some exploratory drilling and they're mapping, doing some uh, geotechnical mapping with this beast. Well, this is the drill rig anyway. Just taking core samples to see how deep the granite is. I believe anyway, or I guess, some sort of jack-up rig, a core bit and there, drill on the top there and then that's the drill bit below the water there. It's quite big when you get close to it. It's got a foul mouth. It's got a foul mouth. Oh yeah, it has, yeah. I wonder why it's shouting at me. I think those are pumps of some sort. First time this year, I've seen it so nice. Pretty flat. Some danglers in the lighthouse. Trying to catch their teeth. Welcome back everybody, I'm JP Fallays and you're joining me on a dive to look for some king scallops. This is a male spider crab, they're just starting to come in now. That one's a bit worse for wear, he's only got half the amount of legs he should have. Um, he's had a hard journey. So here where we're on the seabed is at Tears Point. I'm now heading in a northerly direction, so to the east or to my right is deeper water and to the west and my left is shallower water. Um, I'm just swimming down between the reefs and the sand looking for scallops in between. This huge chunk of concrete is a deadman. This is for, uh, we call them the Yacht Club boys because they put these out as a, uh, a turn point for all the yachts. Um, today I'm just going to follow it up, follow the chain. Um, here's a lost crab pot. Actually looks quite good condition this one. There's still a decent base, base in it and uh, hasn't been there that long by the looks of it. So I'll just tip this on its side and leave it where it is. I'm now going to start swimming up this chain and just see where it goes. Sometimes these uh, chains get caught in the rocks, so as a bit of a favour, sometimes I just like to untangle it if I can. And here's our first scallop. I, when I look for scallops, I tend to um, look on the north or south side of the reef. Um, it's quite rare that you get them like this, which are on the surface and in between the reef. This is my own opinion. Um, I know other scallop divers would be probably screaming at the screen screen saying uh, that's rubbish here's my mate Paul um, didn't realize he was there but I do now it's only because I could hear him um, and this is the chain which goes up to the marker boy on the surface this chains looking a bit worse for wear it's very very thin now hasn't got much time life left in it a couple more seasons but it'd be all right anyway this uh, chain wasn't uh, caught up in anything this time and it's very clean right all the way to the surface some more scallops 
randomly you don't get them like this too much it's obviously it's been swimming and it's it's actually on the flat side down so it's upside down um, they will turn themselves back over and bury themselves it does take a little bit of time but they do actually do it really not sure what this thing actually is looks like a two litre coke bottle that's cut in half and it's got blue painting or antifell maybe I'm not sure I'll put it back just in case it's dangerous so now I'm just going to uh, start swimming with the tide um, and trying to keep slightly ahead of my dust cloud um, sometimes you don't really want to be uh, looking for scallops in your dust cloud so uh, a nice drift dive is my preferred way to do it you haven't got to use too much effort and the tide just keeps, seems to push you along so you see me sometimes I put my finger into the sand if I think there's something there even though I can't see it um, it's just what I do is uh, see that there you've seen uh, the little puff of sand these scallops have got really small uh, iridescent eyes and there's quite a few of them I don't know maybe 50 60 eyes along the front of it which um, can see you coming so that's what they do they end up uh, giving away their hiding place sometimes when they expel a bit of sand as they close every so often I'll just stop and get my bearings um, as a scallop diver you tend to not do this as much um, you normally just swim around as fast as you can and um, hardly look up it's because you, a decent scallop diver will be uh, looking for the next scallop once they've grabbed one like this my head would be looking for the next one um, and sometimes it's actually quicker if you just keep a few in your hand um, and don't put them in the bag just now you normally carry four or five in a hand and then you've got to uh, put them in your dive bag so I'm looking all around the uh, bottoms of these reefs because what tends to happen is the scallop will start swimming uh, and probably hit the reef can't swim no further so it just rests down in the in the reef also I think they're um, they're brainier than we give them credit for because I'm sure they sit in front of these rocks or behind the rocks and rely on the increased uh, uh, current which runs around the rocks so possibly they uh, get a better feed but I don't know that I'm just speculating so basically just grabbing any one um, that looks too small that one so I put it back see all these are very small um, all up this patch at the moment we've found uh, uh, probably four or five mil under the size um, so I never take them there's no point in taking them up if they look even remotely close to being small there's just no point in taking them um, the time you take them back to the surface um, and then chuck them back there's just, just no point I'd rather just leave them there so now I'm just heading, uh, weaving um, east and west throughout the tide and I'm just looking for any indentation in this seabed um, that looks like a scallop. Uh, scallops are quite good in, in the way some of them bury. Some you can only see them swimming in one direction. Um, I found that where I've been swimming south and then I've turned around and started swimming north and I notice a few more that I've actually swum over. Um, it's just the the way they've buried themselves in the sand all these are too small too small and here's a load of look some female spider crabs there's a brown edible crab in the reef very colorful reefs um, they're not tropical but they've got quite a bit of color to them when you put the torch on if I didn't have a torch on that would look just a, a bland green and um, the torch just helps put some color back into it so this is a probably a mustard jar of some sort maybe not that old ideal little habitat for uh, blennies to to sit in so although it's quite nice and decorative I'll leave it there so you see now I'm just looking in between the reefs now uh, there's a few small ones there's a enormous shell been dead a while by the looks of it so again I just stop and have a little look sometimes um, you need to decide if you're going to go east or west around the reef 
uh, it all depends on your air consumption and if you know that it's going to get quite deep it's a waste of a, something, some stainless steel bar of some sort that's come off of possibly someone's boat or thingy so I'm currently just, just looking around I can see some here, too small the good sign is at the moment there is loads around that are just too small so there's two there, just too small what you'll see me do sometimes is I put my hand on top of the shell. I know my fingers are roughly 20 millimeters each, so four 20 mils, eight, 80 mils, so I need to be seeing a good 10 mil either side of my glove. I mean, some of these are definitely big enough. Like that one there, that's definitely big enough. You can see some more ladies. Some boring sponge. Some more spider crabs just sitting on the side of the rocks. So now what I've decided to do is you've got these little sandy uh, veins in between the reefs. Uh, sometimes it's nice to go up here. And there we go, look, there's another one just up against the reef. Too small. Um, on this type of seabed you don't get as many because obviously there's not the same um, square meterage of sand. So basically assessing to myself. I'm taking my time because I'm filming, I'm trying to monitor my air, and monitor my bottom time. Um, also messing around with my torches. Just going to turn the torches off for now um, just so we can see actually what it looks like there's another crab pot that's been lost there's a few crab pots around basically this is almost what you see with the naked eye if anything it's a little bit more blurry than the naked eye but um, just gonna start swimming up between these sandy patches now because um, these little uh, ridges in between um, it's very coarse sand you do find scallops hidden inside these bits uh, in Guernsey I've got 90 bar left so well under half a tank in Guernsey they're mostly found down the uh, east coast the scallops um, in varying different depths so the shallower depths seem to be the smaller ones um, that could be two reasons one of them is probably because the the shallower areas are easier for your divers to get to and the deeper areas are visited less so I'm just showing you here now there's a lot of uh, sand here and they're on the backs of the reef so there's a couple that's a nice clean one relatively young and look at this sand very very coarse there's mural in it in all sorts so I'm just assessing now do I go past the reef or do I have a look in here? So I think I'm gonna have a look in this um, in this sort of very small shallow valley. And there they are. So you can just see by the silt in the water it's actually pushing north, which is over my right shoulder. And now I'm just gonna swim back down this little gully looking. Quite hard spotting them in this rough ground. They're actually easier to, to find in the soft sand because it, to me that looks like a horse footprint and that's what you're looking for um, albeit I do enjoy actually looking through these bits as well some more female spider crabs they're getting a bit more active now um, in the, the last couple of months they've been very brown and covered in weed and not moving very much another one too small this one looks okay yeah that's not bad that's a three year old scallop there pop that in the bag so now we're heading north um, and there's big patches of reef that look like this and then you'd get onto as you swim north past Tears Point it opens out into a big sandy patch so what I like to do is um, these big sandy patches which are either side of the reef I tend to swim east and west looking because there is actually a fair few scallops um, on this sandy patch and we've just entered the sandy patch now so you can see here I look up just to show you what it looks like so there's the reefs and then I'll swim left and right or east and west and swim along these patches and you normally within first three or four meters you normally find a load and there is a few here albeit a lot of them are small so it's scallop and it's all very sort of close quarters um, you don't want to be really looking any further than three meters away optimum is probably uh, arm's length but um, you tend to look probably two meters ahead of you well I do anyway 
and there's an example of me just picking up a load in one hand um, that one looks too small I'll put it back Down to 70 bar now, so I'm um, getting towards the end of my dive. I'm just going to spend a little extra time looking at the wildlife now. Got a decent, well, for me, a half decent bag of scallops. Some female spider crabs. Just going to have another little gander around this area. No doubt there will be more scallops to be found. It is actually quite hard to hold a camera uh, with two torches hanging off of it. Uh, and film at the same time uh, swim and do all the monitoring so here's my dust cloud so I've, I've gone east now now I'm heading back west into shallower water albeit it's probably only a couple of meters shallower just to see if I can find any more and there is a few but these are fairly small Got a funny feeling I might be chucking a couple of these back. So just swimming into my dust cloud. Uh, the dust clouds are always worse when you've got your torches on. So sometimes you just sit and wait. Um, other times I have just swum through it until it clears. Uh, it all depends on where you are. There's nothing worse than losing complete vision um, when you're scalloping. A little daunting, you do get used to it though. In terms of ideal uh, substrate for these scallops, what you're seeing here is the majority of uh, wh where you'll find them um, in this quite sharp sand. Saying that, you do find them on the uh, on the slightly muddier uh, bank at Fermain, which drops down deep. It's a lot finer sand, it's almost like talcum powder. Um, not that when you catch them by hand uh, it makes any difference because you're not dragging them uh, in opposed to getting them in a trawl so they're not picking up all this sand uh, it's quite it's it's definitely the best way to catch scallops put it that way um, last thing you want to be doing is having scallops with a, a slight grit to them So now I'm just pointing out, I've uh, swum a bit further east now and I'm still along this edge of this, this reef. Um, you can't really tell but it does actually slope up to the rocks, the, the sand is pushed up against them, only by probably a metre. You, you tend to find them right up against a reef. I'm only guessing it's they've swum up as far as close as a reef um, and then can't swim any further so they've just weighted in the sand and there's the reef going all the way around start getting a bit excited because I can see what looks like a bit of shipwreck and I think this could be part of the Beaufort albeit it's probably further south than what I've ever seen any of the other stuff but it's a long piece of metal anyway and this is a, another common thing you find um, if you find like an old pot or some rope or an old trawl cable or anything that's laying in the sand you will find scallops uh, very close to it to the left and right um, I'm not quite sure if they use this for a, or they think they use this for a little bit of camouflage or a little bit of protection but um, if you do find a bit of discarded rope I find you find scallops around this discarded rope <laughs> I think that female spider crab's trying to go for me. They're definitely feistier now than they were. There's enough of some more just up against the reef. That's the thing I say to myself, right, I've got to go up, and then I find a load more. But you have to go up, don't get caught out. It's an okay bag. Just showing how wide the neck is for scale. There's probably, I don't know, maybe 30 scallops in here. 
Um, I would expect a lot more if I was actually diving properly rather than filming and trying to show you how I scallop. we do when we come up is we give it three big uh, pulls so our buffs bounce up and down that just lets the boatman know that we're coming to the surface check out how nice it is nice calm evening there's Matt yours above me there you want to pick up pull but it is flat some fishermen coming back home there's that buff with the chain we came past, and we haven't actually gone that far, have we? 60, 70 metres, I reckon. It's absolutely lovely. Was the arbor. Could not be bothered. To reel it up. To reel that up. No. Nah. Almost as much as me, mate, look. Yeah. Almost. See some of these uh, uh don't even need to gauge that. Oh clip for nearly lost me trip and reel. Uh, thought you'd start to do a bagpipe then. No. The Tuesday night dives. I can feel there's rain on the way though. I'm actually quite warm and yeah, but like that. You can see, yeah. I'll prove how warm I am. Oh, your hands steam. Don't know if you can see that, but yeah, my hands are steaming. Right, let's get these scallops uh, graded and chopped back. Or mostly chop back because I don't know if it's a there's a few keepers there, but then again there is some that needs to go back. Just keep it like that while we're down here, so sure people are whizzing past. Yeah, there's some here that ain't. See that one's in. Randomly on these scallops, well, not so much randomly, but we gauge our scallops this way round. I know other people in other countries gauge it this way round. But with king scallops, you do it this way round. Same as mine, there's a lot of just ins there, eh? Right? Like that one there near your knee. That one must. That this one? No, the other one under your knee, look. Yeah, that one. What happened there? Yeah, you weren't right. even looking, you were just grabbing, eh? That's alright, that one. That's alright. <laughs> <laughs> See, fisheries. <laughs> <that, laughs> my cat would love that. Yeah. <laughs> A little old French lady would love that. But not in Guernsey. See, those ones are underneath the bigger ones. Yeah, they're the babies, yeah, eh? Yeah. Grab them. 
Sometimes when you're in the dark fumbling around, you just scoop them in. But no harm done to them, they're going straight back. And we haven't moved anywhere really, so we're all going back in the same area. Thanks for joining us on this dive. This was my how to or my little tips on how to scallop. I'm not an expert, um, but this is what I've learned myself. So I hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next tide.